five o'clock. We'll call the uh, April first meeting to order. I'll be attached to board of trustees. Three trustees: fiscal officer, road administrator, fire chief, valued guests, members of the meeting. Welcome. Um, all right. Let's begin. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of March 18, 2019. So moved. Mr. Hoster moves. Mr. Hoster moves. second. Yeah. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? One very minor change. Thank you. As minor as you can get. I think there's only two letters I have. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> any further discussion? Mm -hmm. How many would vote, please? Uh, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. And I entertain a motion to approve the payment of the bills in the amount of $77,995.44. Yes, I think. Mm -hmm. Broken down general fund $6,810.47. Fire fund $27,933.34. Cemetery fund $400 even. EMS billing $8,667.68. Road and bridge, oh my. $34,183.95. What is going on? There's a big new it's, toy it's the, <laughs> on the property. It's that gas tax mm -hmm. money we're getting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, capital project is zero. Is there a motion to approve those counts? Aim of those counts. I would make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Hollis is second. Any further discussion regarding payment lead bills? Any none may vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Apparently we have a member of the audience, uh, Jennifer Adams, who'd like to ask a couple of questions. Jennifer, the floor is yours. Um, yes, I am, um, number one, thank you for allowing me to, to speak today. Um, You're very welcome. I am wondering if the township has any information, um, or what information the township has regarding the solar project that's going on uh, in Miami Township. In a couple other places in Greene County, mm -hmm. I haven't received a whole lot of information, and I'm just trying to collect. Mm -hmm. We're aware of it. Uh, we don't know any particulars. Uh, how many parcels, parcel owners, that sort of thing. You know what the what the uh, final number is that they're requiring. Uh, that's all being done by a private uh, organization. The way I understand it, anyway. It, Gentlemen, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I don't know if there's a timetable or not. So uh, again, we are aware of it. And our zoning administrator, our inspector, who is normally here this evening, uh, has followed up on it a little more fully than we have um, because of a certain interest out in the, uh, the property owners out in the township. Um, if he doesn't happen to walk in <laughs> relatively soon, uh, we can certainly give uh, you his contact information and you may uh, learn more about it. Okay, that would work. I, I did have a call in to Mr. Rizop. Um He was uh, on vacation last week and I didn't want to call him back. Oh. Um, so I do plan on calling him later this week okay. if, if that's the only source of yeah. information. I mean, we're just not getting a lot, yeah. I guess. Um, I know a little bit because we happened to have some property that they were interested in. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I don't think people who are without property, or people who are without property that they're interested in, really aren't um, being informed of anything. Um, and it does More than likely not, because I'm yeah. sure they're not being, uh, you know, they're not being uh, addressed, uh, approached for right. any, any reason. And that's kind of what we're mm -hmm. uh, Our former trustee, Lamar Strackland, uh, knows quite a bit. Uh, I've talked to him a couple times. Okay. And he'd probably be happy just to talk on the phone if you called him up. Okay. Um, uh, we had someone from the Farm Bureau come talk in December mm -hmm. about our options. Uh, although the remembering right power siting board mm -hmm. uh, has authority uh, overriding our zoning uh, we can make comments and we can uh, sort of be at the table as a stakeholder but with no vote 
that is we can request a hearing and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and the fellow from the Farm Bureau spoke of a range of considerations that we could push, uh, that, that, that there was adequate consideration of drainage issues and runoff. And, uh, but we really don't have a lot of, we don't have any direct authority. Okay. Once it goes to the power siting board, are the, the citizens in the area, are they notified that it gets there? Or, I mean, we can, I can call question. them and ask them. I um, believe it's a, they're public hearings, yes. I don't know what, how yeah, yeah, I wonder how the notices uh, are made. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a second question? Let's look at two. Um, well, it doesn't sound like um, you'll be able to answer. My, some of them were a little bit more specific regarding if we know any of the locations that they're entertaining yeah. um, and how, what are the plans for keeping um, the population informed, just in general, either the surrounding properties or just the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. that, that was my question. Well, either Richard or Lamar might have some of that information. You know, Lamar has some detail of uh, I'd, I'd rather not mention names because for me it would be like third-hand information. Right. Uh, but there were, you know, cases, for instance, of people who refused, they didn't want uh, their land used for an array, but they were willing to have uh, transmission lines go across their property, for instance. Mm -hmm. So there, there are specifics floating out there. That, okay. Um, and my understanding is most of what they've been doing is in Cedarville Township. Yeah, I, I think they're doing some stuff near our home. We happen to be Miami Township, just north of, mm -hmm. of Cedarville Township. Um, but I think it includes both. Oh, yeah, yeah some. I mean, yeah. <coughs> Their letter did cite, because they, so initially they sent us a letter because of the, uh, they were interested in the property. In their letter, they had cited um, Xenia, Cedarville, and Miami Township in the Green County area. Mm -hmm. That's all I recall. But that's all, I don't have anything more specific other than secondhand, thirdhand. And there's, <coughs> uh, also a fellow at the Ohio State Extension Service who specializes in uh, solar issues. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't have his name here, but I uh, imagine if you went to the Extension website, there'd be contact information. Okay. Thank you. Certainly welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting or leave. Well, I'm glad she just let her go. She wants to. Let her know it's fine. <laughs> I went there for a little bit. Yeah, and if you, if you leave the camera, we'll even know. Okay, good. <laughs> You'll be released on your own with yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move along. Um, a fair amount of correspondence to go through here briefly. Um, some emails regarding the DCIC starting the 501c3 uh, application process, uh, Economic Sustainability Commission meetings for April 3rd. Um, uh, we needed a copy of OIS Connector resolution sent to uh, Village Manager Bates for some reason, I'm not sure. Uh, notification of an April 10th, April 10th, April 10th luncheon with the new village manager candidates, the four candidates. A memo from uh, uh, House Representative Rick Corrales uh, to Road Administrator Vilkenar regarding a 629 grant program. Um, we can discuss that if you're interested in that uh, for your report. Uh, we have minutes of uh, March 27th and March 20th conference calls with MSA, USDA, and Miami Township. And a copy of the request for qualifications that are currently being advertised in three, three newspapers. 
for a uh, construction manager at risk. Uh, person. Uh, the, the contract is something different, but anyway. That, that might be what that is. Scope of service emails from MSA, Chris Weider, and Miami Township. Uh, uh, email from Miami Township Value Engineering, reference materials. Not sure what that is. Notice from County Auditor about the fire EMS levy rep expiration in 2019, which we do need to discuss under fire. Meeting minutes for the March 19th, our PCC meeting, Green County Township Association, uh, March 12th min meeting minutes, cemetery grant program update from uh, Department of Commerce. Uh, email from Otarma about adding vehicle to the policy, that would be the tanker. Email from Bath Township Trustee uh, uh, Steve Ross regarding fire EMS reporting. Uh, the 2020 Census Participant Statistical Area Program meeting of April 19th. Request for input from the new su superintendent for Hill Springs Schools. Uh, the January 15th uh, Zone Commission meeting minutes, NBRPC's news, news release uh, on the uh, uh, census invitation to comment uh, on the boundaries, fund status, revenue status, preparation status for March 1st. Is there any further correspondence? Yeah, I guess. Hmm? Is it 2018 or 19? Well, it, well you know. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> you said March 1st, and I put 2018, so we're just. Oh. <laughs> I had one additional piece of correspondence that, that came in late this uh, evening that I thought might be of interest to the board. And it's from uh, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Alice DeWine, and she writes, I just wanted to write to let you know that I've accepted a position with the Clark County Prosecutor, and today is my last day here in Greene County. I've enjoyed the opportunity of representing you in the past year. I've learned so much. Please contact Ms. Bellis. Should you need anything, there are a few projects I haven't completed. And meetings I have set up. I have passed everything on to Eli, and she intends to be at any of those meetings that she's scheduled. Where's so she going? She's going to Clark County. Wow. Oh. No, so Leaving the going to Clark. Wow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, don't know about a replacement yet. Uh, it's a relatively quick decision and quick job change. So, well, good for her. All right. There no further correspondence. Uh, Chief, the floor is yours. All righty. Uh, <clears throat> since the last meeting, we've had 34 EMS calls, 13 fire incidents, and done three fire safety inspections. EMS calls just keep ticking along. Yeah, they do. Um, and actually, out of the 34 in the last two weeks, I think only three were not transported to the hospital. Really? They really else wow. went to the hospital, which is Yeesh. unusual. So. Um, the uh, tanker's air leak turned out to be a little more sinister than we had originally thought, <coughs> or well, or even they thought. Uh, <laughs> uh, you fixed the one part and then they discovered another leak, but now everything looks like it's taken care of, except now we just discovered something else. But I think that will survive. So, <laughs> yeah, this is all part of the evil fair plan. <laughs> anyway, no, you take that tanker. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> you know, okay. um, so, we're just waiting to get. Uh, Get it into PNR to get a radio put in it since it doesn't have one. Um, and then, if all goes according to plan, it'll go from PNR to Danco to get striked and then come back and we'll back it right in. And it'll be warm enough then, and the old guy can sit outside at Dan's place and not worry about freezing. Right. For now, at least. So, um, so that's, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. Unless it just rolls over in the bay and <laughs> find it dead. But um, <laughs> we've got a resolution, uh, and excuse me. Totally flipped the numbers there. 2019-13, not 13-2019. But anyway, appointment of a new volunteer. Uh, Nate Walter uh, is a firefighter. Once again, an EMT. Um, he's friends with current member Evan France, which we won't hold against him. Mm -hmm. But he interviewed very well. He works here in town at Cresco Labs. He's a process engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really sure what that is, but uh, <laughs> seems to enjoy his job there. So he's a good guy. <laughs> Um, the guys who interviewed him said he was good, very nice. Lady. So there you go. I understand that Cresco releases employees for so many hours of volunteer a quarter. Yes, they have some thing like that. So we'll explore that. I think we'll mm -hmm. uh, where 
where's this opportunity for BMT training? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> we have to figure that one out still. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, Premier will do another class over the summer. Mm -hmm. $750. Yeah. Very nice. Nice price. Very nice price. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he seems like a good kid. Okay. Uh, oh, this is just something good. Probably kind of the blue. Um, about three months ago, Rick Perales's legislative assistant emailed me. Should we pass a resolution before we... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I, just, I didn't know if that was related. No, it wasn't. I'm so totally I didn't make a motion to uh, approve resolution 2019-13, uh, the appointment of an MT, uh, our volunteer, uh, Nate Walters. Is there a motion? Okay, I would make that motion. I'll second it. Motion and seconding for the discussion regarding passing resolution 2019-13. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Thank you. I'm <laughs> sorry about you rushing you through that. Thank you. Um, yeah, still, apparently. Thank you for um, the Oh, so, yeah, Rick Perales' legislative assistant emailed me and said he wanted to know who had, if we had any award, you know, if I won award winners from the year and uh, I said yes, so I sent them a list and never heard anything back and I figured, all right, well, that's one of those nice things. That you they 2018 did. or 19? Well, 18. Uh -huh. um, and then yesterday we received, all the guys received these really cool House of Representatives uh, yeah, things. So uh, I'm going to show that each of the guys get them. Danny, Brett, Ryan, Casey, and Joe mm -hmm. all received them, so that's very nice. And interestingly, I guess this is just what they do, but I just sent them a list of names, and they apparently researched who they were, because like Brett lives in Centerville, so his is signed by both Rick Perales and Jim Butler, who's his representative. Yeah. Casey lives in West Carrollton, his representative signed it. I guess nice. these are a little more uh, in depth than I thought they would be. So <laughs> tax dollars at work right there. Yeah. I mean, privacy people would probably think, oh, God. Why the hell? <laughs> the $62 million of oh, oh, state of Ohio budget for 2019, you know. It's all going to that. Yeah. Background checks. Um, and also in the uh, world of awards, um, I mentioned the last meeting, mm -hmm. where the guys we're going to give accommodation to and Kettering Health Network was going to come. So they're going to come on, if it's okay with you guys, the May 6th meeting. May 6th. Uh, they were representing from Kettering Health Network here to present the guys with something. Oh, I'm not sure that would be nice. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. The only other thing is uh, there's a bill in there for Clay and Stan, the design people. They did some design work for us on two projects, but one was redesigning our ad in the Yellow Springs News, which has been the same for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it ran last week for the first time. I thought it was very nice. Um, and it uses our new theme and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so. There you go. Hopefully, the phone will be ringing off the hook. <laughs> sure will. And that's it. I noticed that 25 years ago we hired first professional EMT part time. 25 years ago? Just a little loose from the past. First professional. Hey. Hey. I don't know if I would have loved it. Announcing it, yeah. Oh. Well, she was here before I was. Well, Pope was announcing it. Pope was employed. Yeah. As a professional EMT. Oh, wow. yeah. Well, cool. Well, just <coughs> I'll I'll make a copy of the article. Okay. <laughs> Frame it for you. Okay. Cool. Sounds, sounds good. Do you do you have any hopes of burning the cemetery? Yes, I was speaking with Rodzar uh, Gokenauer. <laughs> We're planning on um, burning it tomorrow evening yeah. um, for drill. Mm -hmm. As long as there's, you know, things don't care about it. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, that's the plan. He's going to round up a crew and burn it, baby. <laughs> now, you just want the, the back part burned, right? That's all. Awesome. Yeah, that's the whole thing. We need the tubs. What? Oh, yeah, we use those to cover up. 
Probably a good idea. If it works. Probably have more stones than does, but I don't know, they might be able to be moved as they go. I don't know. Then the quantum sit them. Mm -hmm. If you want, I'm sure you get them. Yeah, that may have worked. Have they used them before? I thought yeah, they did, yeah. I yeah, they worked so. fine before. Yeah. Okay. Cool. okay. All right, cool. You just had them out there at the shop? I'll make sure you get them. More. Okay, cool. Still eagerly awaiting the 2018 annual report. So what? And so, <laughs> so is our new website with a thing that says coming soon. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Hopefully, uh, it soon should be within. It should be done for the next meeting. So. Ah, excellent. All right, anything else with Barb? Uh, I'm still interested in a comparison of uh, how much we're paying. Uh, to surrounding townships. I uh, emailed Deputy Chief Greg Beagle from Zinga Township to ask. I thought Alex had done that. Alex mm -hmm. did a budget comparison, not salaries. So I was incorrect. Um, but Deputy Chief Beagle did a survey last year. Yeah, um, that, that would be enough for me. So he's uh, he's going to send me his results. And he did all, all the local departments. So. Um, I thought I still had it, but apparently it's lost in my but once I get that, I'll get that to you guys. Cool. Should give you an idea, please. Okay, we'll move to the new firehouse report. Um, I, uh, you gentlemen have probably followed where we are with correspondence and, and, and the like and, and the emails here in and out, but I think maybe for the benefit of the, uh, the audience, the media, and the, and the viewing folks at home. I'll briefly go on uh, record as to what we've done in the, in the past couple of weeks. Because we, we have made some, in my opinion, I think we've made some progress. And uh, I'm encouraged uh, that, that uh, we're going to get this moved along um, more quickly than we thought um, two weeks ago anyway. So as you may recall, at our last meeting, uh, we talked about how we've made a, a change to go from single prime uh, contracts, mm -hmm. uh, one general contractor bidding on the whole thing, to a uh, multiple prime contract type of system using a construction manager uh, where they would bid uh, individual portions of the, the building, the roof, the electric, the plumbing, the asphalt, uh, all individually um, in order to uh, um, actually, for lack of a better word, to pit these these subcontractors one against each other to get a better bid as opposed to just being one portion of a, of a, of a whole bid. So we decided to move along with that uh, uh, option and um, put an ad in the paper uh, of the, the papers, the Dayton Daily News, the Cincinnati Inquirer, and the, and the Columbus Dispatch for three weeks in April, which began last Wednesday, so it would be three Wednesdays, and then uh, those requests for qualifications for construction managers um, who would do that, that job uh, would be due here and for review uh, and assessment. Um, just about that time, uh, a, uh, an architect from App Architects in Kettering who did the work on the five uh, firehouses that were just recently built in Kettering, reached out to us and offered his um, professional services to, quote, have a new set of eyes, take a look at our uh, drawings and specs, uh, perhaps maybe see something that might save us um, money over and above what we've already um, uh, been kicking around with that most recent um, memo from, from MSA about what the plan was for changing the footprint and just that, you know, all those things that we talked about. And I uh, went and I met with a man, Tim Bennett, his name, very nice gentleman, very professional. And he, I believe he was the one who oversaw the design work for the different firehouses for Kettering. So he knew of which what he was speaking. And uh, he agreed, with a little prodding, <laughs> to uh, act as a consultant, a paid consultant for us, 
um, to review our drawings and, and make whatever recommendations he thought might, uh, might, benefit, might benefit us. So I was encouraged by that. And, and then I think the next day, I was, uh, we were approached by the WDC group in Springfield for somewhat this, the same idea to offer their services to, to see what, uh, uh, what, might, what might be possible uh, in, in cost saving and also to um, kind of um, explain how this whole construction manager, single prime bid, multi prime bid, you know, all these different methods of, of project delivery, you know, were and what what they thought might be the best for us. And I said, well, I, you know, really, if you think you've got some some better plan, as it were, you know, put it together and, and let us know. So a couple days later, uh, I got a message that they would like to meet. And so I went up to Springfield and met with them um, on, um, it was a week ago today. In the morning, and uh, Chris Widener gave a, uh, a lengthy, thorough, and very enlightening because how much of this do I know? I don't know this stuff. Uh, explanation of how, how, how this stuff works. And to kind of boil it down, the single prime method where you put it out for bids, the general contractor, it, it, it depends upon the, how well the economy is doing, but they basically mark up the cost 15% as a profit for theirs. And then they go out and they get bids and they build up the bill. Now the construction manager, there's two kinds of construction managers. One's called construction manager at risk, and one's called a construction manager agency. The construction manager at risk puts out multiple prime contracts, again for the roofing and the plumbing, and, and, and they put that out and they enter into a contract with the subcontractor. They, per, they professionally enter into the contract for their services and they are taking the risk that the subcontractor will do the work for the amount of money to the quality that's required. They, they take that risk. And then there's the other kind, which is called the construction manager agent. And the construction manager agent does not contract with the subcontractors. They negotiate the, they find the subcontractors, they negotiate the best price, the best quality service, and then they recommend to the user, us, uh, to, to contract with these, with these people, and then we con contract with them um, through our contract attorney, which is, which he's patiently waiting in Columbus for the last three years or two years or whatever it's been to actually make a contract with somebody. And, uh, and, then, and then we hold the contract and we assume the risk and if something goes wrong with the subcontractor, it's our responsibility along with the, with the construction manager agent to find a replacement and get it done the right place and all that stuff. Lots of information. And so uh, I said, Okay, um, and and the Widener Group is a construction manager. They're really a hybrid. Uh, they're a combination of construction manager, um, uh, agent, and single prime. Well, the design bid part where the where the one office is both architect and um, and construction manager. That's that's kind of what they do. Now, the. The single prime contractor or eight, not agent, operation gets, let's say, 15%. A construction manager at risk gets 8%, not 15%. But he also gets, on a contingency, another 8% for expenses. That includes contingencies, it includes all the soft costs like site preparation and, and and fencing and putting the trailers on and, and hiring the people to, to be there to inspect and to oversee and all of that stuff. So you got 15% as, a, as a, a single prime contractor. You now have 
16 percent as a um, as a construction manager at risk. We ain't saving any money that way. A construction manager agent. Well, anyway, the Widener Group as a construction manager agent takes a flat four percent fee, um, and with no with no expenses on top of that. And so, you know, doing the math, we would be saving money by potentially going that route. Um, I, I told them, thank you very much. I'll take all this information back and, and try and put it into some sort of logic and talk with our architect, talk with our financial arm, USDA, and see if, if you know, if they thought we should proceed this way. So the first uh, call I got, I, I got a call from Ashley before I was able to give him a call, and he said in no uncertain terms that USDA would not approve a construction manager type of uh, uh, form of delivery. And in the past, they have done a couple of construction manager at risks but never a construction manager agent, which is what the, the C group. Wasn't this their idea? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, no, it was my idea, but they thought it was a good idea. Okay. I, yeah. I knew they were in there somewhere. <laughs> Enthusiastic. But, but, okay. Now there's a big but to this. But for the past 10 or 15 years, something like that, Ashley has worked with the Widener group as a construction manager agent, his hybrid way he does it, the way Wider does it, and he is very pleased with the results, uh, very uh, pleased with the uh, um, amount of um, cost savings that Widener gets when he gets in there and does the research. He says it's just amazing uh, how you know, how many subcontractors, number one, they know in the industry and they know which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones and, and so they'll, you know, they'll work with them to try and get the right price and they, they'll watch them like a hawk and, you know, all that stuff. And I put, I put a, a copy, I'm sure somebody has seen it, of the scope of service, maybe that's what we're referring to, the scope of service that Widener puts out as to what they do as part of their, as part of their service. Um, I'm confused. Me too. Go ahead. <laughs> you, just, you just said Ashley, while at the USDA, mm -hmm. has been working with Widener and other yeah. projects, yeah. and that they won't let us do it. They won't let us do any other except for Widener. Oh. Mm. Well, that's kind of sound like a kickback, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Okay, so then we need to talk to MSA about this because the whole the whole thing I was concerned about with with talking with App Architecture or talking with WC Group or Widener Group was that you know MSA would be put off by it and you know it might cause some hard feelings right. or, or those sorts of things and uh, but they they were very open to to having you know somebody else okay. review it. And, or at least they said they were, and so that's why I progressed, proceeded down that way. So then I thought, well, nothing pension, nothing gained. I called them, seeing what they thought of this idea of the hybrid, working with um, the wider group as a CMA, basically as a. And this is how this is how um, Ashley Kelly describes it to me. MSA would still be the lead everything on the project. They would have the total responsibility and the same responsibility for um, uh, for getting a, a final product built at the price that you know we agreed to when we started. But they would hire the Widener's group as a subcontractor under what's called an additional services program within the AIA um, architectural contract that, w that we signed with MSA. There's, there is a line for additional services. And that's where this would go. And so, uh, I sent Nestor that, that set of 
information, that set of pages, that information on the scope of service that he would put out. And I had a lengthy conversation with him uh, on the phone last, last week um, and it explained to him kind of how as I understood it would go, which was different than the way he understood it would, it would go, which I think was the more traditional construction manager at risk or maybe even the agent. And he came back to me and said that he had discussed it with Michael Schuster and said that they, although it was sounded interesting as a, as, a, as a way to do this, they would not go that direction for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, uh, they didn't feel they, their insurance would cover another, another firm coming in and, and doing work that they're supposed to be doing. And, a couple of other different points, which ended up being um, um, not actually accurate, and maybe I wasn't s uh, clear enough as to what Widener was proposing to do um, in, in this project. And once we had a conference call um, last Wednesday, and Ashley Kelly was able to explain more fully to to Dan and Nestor, exactly what it was, the service that they provide. Um, Nestor basically said, sounds fine to me, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> no problem. Uh, you know, they're not, because he was, he was thinking of the construction manager at risk where they would take the contracts under the, their own firms. The construction manager at risk would have the contracts. Whereas MSA is, con contractually uh, obligated to us to, to, to take the contracts. And he, he said that wouldn't work. Right. But since the contracts would then be with the township and not with them, there, there wouldn't be a problem doing it that way. Anyway. <laughs> so we are meeting uh, um, Thursday. Thursday. Uh, Thursday in Wilmington to kind of uh, work out the nuts and bolts of whose responsibility is whose for doing this this meeting and I, I think I told told you that uh, has really has going to have nothing to do with the design or any of the value engineering or any of the decisions in, in that regard it, it's just a matter of, of trying to get these people you know put together so yeah. they can work together to, to move along and I'm not a hundred percent sure at this point why but you don't you don't at that point you don't put things out for bids. Uh, I mean, you, you basically, the, the same way, you know, we're putting this request for qualifications for a construction manager out in an advertisement. All it is is a request for qualification, very similar to the way you did it originally for the request for qualifications for the architects. They're, they're, not, they're not making a proposal. You, you're not picking the top three or anything like that. I mean, you're, you, judge them and then you decide on, on your judgment points and sort of thing. We wouldn't be doing that with this because this is a subcontractor, not a construction manager. Sort of anyway, who are we advertising for? Well, we're advertising for a construction manager at risk and the reason we are is because those ads were placed prior to my discussions okay. uh, with, with Ashley and, and, and Wider. So, um, we may need them as a fallback if this doesn't work out. Um, you never know. Uh, we may need, you know, the the information from App Architecture about, excuse me, cost, uh, value engineering, cost savings, and um, there's also a couple of other different possibilities of, of contracting, uh, contacting contractors who had bid on this project to find out where savings might be made in, in their opinion. So. Um, If they all seem to get along well and you know, shake hands and <laughs> smoke cigars and stuff, then uh, they will begin work redesigning it to, to, to get it to a price that they both would agree uh, would be feasible uh, to do. And that could potentially save us uh, a fair amount of time. Um, Maybe not a ton, but um, instead of maybe six months, we might might be able to get some of these contracts put out in three months. 
from the thought. So that'd be good too. Yeah. Uh, get a little more of a head start on getting this thing under under yeah, roof before uh, before the weather turns. So that's kind of where we are. Um, if you have any questions? <laughs> good luck <laughs> getting an answer, but I'd be happy to try. <laughs> I asked mine along the way. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe you can bring the contract manager. Uh, you can bring the contract attorney to the meeting room. Yeah, that's we'll get it all, we'll get it all straightened out. So I'm sorry about that long-winded uh, explanation, but I thought it was good to bring everybody up to speed as yeah. to where where we are. Uh, okay. So let's move to uh, Cemetery Road. Cemetery. Well, we got a couple of ashes last week. They were on Saturday and Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. We're going to have one next Monday in the temple. Mm -hmm. It's just already scheduled like 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's what it's like. Did you say next Monday? Is that what you said? No, yeah. uh -huh. next Monday. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. 11 o'clock. Uh, clean up all the flowers and stuff down. Just sit there. So I put them in the dude. Mm -hmm. Not room to put them in the dumpster to the dumpster. Mm -hmm. Soon after, we'll be good to go. I bet I'll probably start mowing for a while. We'll let it change. We'll get on. We'll get on. We'll get on. We're ready. First week in April. Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's all I have for soon. Okay. Um, have you? Tried your new cemetery computer yet? Yes. But I couldn't get out of the flip to go to the forest. I didn't do something. <laughs> I got in and pulled up. Which, which part? I was looking for a name here. I was trying to find something. Not on the website. Oh, you were trying to find something. You went to the website? I went the in. search? And it was, it was on, I went in the password, whatever. And it pulled up the Clifton thing. I think we were okay or something. I couldn't. I couldn't navigate. We'll have to. Okay. Because it. It's running through again quickly. It should be. Yeah. Because it should be one big happy family. Every. Right. And every. I, you know, I tried to Glen Forest in, and it went to it, but I couldn't do anything with it. And every time I tried a bunch of names, it went back. So I'm not doing something. Right. But if you run me, if you ring her again, it'll be alright. Okay. Sure. Because it's very. Be very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we were asked uh, a couple of days ago that potentially when you're mowing the uh, circle mm -hmm. that you couldn't knock off the mill grass. Mm -hmm. You take a look and see if you can work that in your schedule. Sure. Okay. I was asked about that not long ago and someone that asked me said they were asking you. Mm -hmm. So I said I'd wait till. Well, she asked me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't see why not. We used to take care of it. Yeah. Well, I couldn't go in there and probably take an hour. Yeah. I'm sure, it would make it look nice. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, would you like to give a, a, a brief presentation on your new piece of equipment? I would like to thank the trustees for the recent equipment upgrade. <laughs> it's a very valuable piece of equipment. Well, you're very welcome. It's quite a bit more than I expected. I, hope I mean, operation-wise, it's, it's, it's a jewel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure you put it to good use and have many oh, happy will. years of I will. It's service. It's pretty universal. Mm -hmm. We already used it some. You hear anything from Tim about that? Not yet. Did he send anything to you? No. Nope. I called today and left a message. You didn't get back to me. I'll try in the morning. I'm, I'm, I'm not following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you asked Tim, did you ever Jim? No. Tim about oh, what? Oh, uh, the bucket. We have to, to purchase a bucket for it. Yeah. I have a straight bucket, but we need a combination bucket. Mm -hmm. And he's on the search. He didn't get back to me. I called him after a message, but I'll try to get him on. Mm -hmm. He said they get, you know, used ones or new ones. I said, either way, I need one. Mm -hmm. You can find me a used one, fine. If not. Would you like to explain what a combination bucket does? It opens so I can grab it. <laughs> very, very useful tool for us. We use that for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Logs, rocks, very, very beneficial. Yeah. So hopefully, I'll have an answer on that. <coughs> we 
We use that bucket more than anything mm -hmm. when we bought fish. Any um, thought in the back of your mind about that? Um, Catch basin on, on uh, Tobias. Mm -hmm. We're gonna move. I know you're thinking about it, but you know. I was hoping maybe next week. I hope it this week, but it's not gonna happen this week. Maybe next week. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't take long. You know, day at the most. Yeah. You know, it. And I look up there today, and water is running down the road again. It's running right where I want to put it. Right where I want to put it in the first place. Mm -hmm. you know, that's where it's gonna go. Mm -hmm. And the farmers, the, the, the property owners, are okay with it. But we talk. Mm -hmm. Back in February. Mm -hmm. So it's on the list. Okay. Um, I just want to let you know that uh, the property owner, I talked to the property owner on that uh, tree across the Morris Bean um, entrance, the dead tree that's leaning I on the live stream. today also. Pardon me? I spoke with him today too. Well, there you go. So. All right. You got it working? Okay. Well, I'm we're done. Um, Don, I'm not sure you we were, well, you weren't here, but I'm not sure that you do understood that every once in a while when we have uh, some additional funds available in the cemeteries, we'll uh, hire a small group of people to come and repair broken headstones and monuments, pick them back up if they're lying on the ground, mm -hmm. put them back together, and they can actually cement broken pieces together, they can actually fabricate new parts that, you know, new corners or edges or something if something needs it. Um, and we haven't done that for quite a while. I think we did it the first year we owned the cemetery. Mm -hmm. 2013 right? maybe. 2013. So it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. And uh, we it's seem to be... We could use it in Clifton. Well, that's where we had them originally. Mm -hmm. That's how we... We went to a seminar, on, yeah. and they, they worked there two or three years. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we spent a they, bundle. Yeah. And they did a lot, oh, but there's yeah. a lot to do, of course. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the problem with Clifton, Clifton doesn't generate a whole lot of income, you know, a lot of excess income. Um, the people who say they would volunteer, how, how hard is it to learn how to do the and pretty hard. That's what I talked about the other day with you. Maybe do a seminar mm -hmm. on a Saturday. Have them come in for the week and then have them do a seminar or do the seminar and then stick around for the week. You need work tables, you need clamps, you need uh, mm -hmm. like a bobcat to move You know some of these heavier pieces around. Uh, some of them have, what was that tripod that we made? to lift up. Right, use chain hoist. And yeah, the chain hoist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can move stones around, take them apart. A lot of the ones in Clifton are really fairly small. Well, yeah, but there are some big ones that right. need attention, but you're talking about maybe good force. Mm -hmm. And I think the last time we had them, and they worked by a, by the week, um, it was uh, 3,500, I think, 30, uh, 37, something yeah. like And I noticed we were running a little over forty-five thousand in in uh, cash in a cemetery account. Uh, so I thought maybe we contact these folks and we'll see if we could schedule a week this year. Maybe that I idea. like that idea. That sounds good. They're very good. They're, they're very good at what they do. This is the same group that we've used. In Wall the graveyard group. Yeah. Wall. Mm -hmm. They're very good. What they do. What, they're, what are they called? Graveyard groomers. <laughs> so I don't business. Yeah. I found this card. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get a hold of it. So I entertain a motion to um, hire graveyard groomers for hopefully a week this year. Uh, could we, rather than make it a full authorization if we don't know the price? Are you there be able to with approach and we can do that. I would yeah. Uh, that might I mean what's it's fairly early in the year. They they tend to They like to fall. Yeah. They tend I mean they'll work any time, but mm -hmm. it seems like we had them in the month of September. Mm -hmm. Sometime mid late early October seems like they're not doing it. Mm -hmm. 
anything? Couldn't we approach them and ask what the, they're what they're charging now? Or oh, I will. I'll ask them. And, and then, and then uh, it was make a not an hour, hour, but they only charged us ninety an hour for some reason. Well, we put them up too. It's probably one. <laughs> it averaged around 37, 35, like you said, somewhere there's what it averaged for the week. Okay, well, but they'll I'm do. in favor of it, I just, I, I'm just, they'll I do. don't want to make a motion authorizing it with sort of open-ended price. Okay, well, we'll... I'll make contact with him. We'll look at that then the next meeting, or when we get the information. Do you want it just for good force, or do you want to consider both? Yeah. Just the red force right now. Um, uh, you know, the Clifton Cemetery Board's going to need to meet and review right. the finances and you know all of that. So. So you're going to get a Clifton Cemetery maintenance invoice. Yeah. Turn in your report. You have turned it into the clerk? I will. You will? Yeah. You said that at the last meeting that you will. Yeah. Oh. I will. <laughs> it's like May is coming up in a no month. I will. <laughs> will be, be here this week. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> what's your recommendation for who could we get to trace that? Water leak and repair it in Glen Forest. Like now. Oh, you want me to get somebody? I was going to do it. You don't have time. I don't have time. I mean, is that something AC Service does? Well, if you have not check it out. Ask them. Mm -hmm. I think they have Dan Lee deep for them if they do. Well, sure, but you got to. I mean, do they, is, how do they know where it is? I don't, I'm not sure. You know, we shut it off and it's not leaking. So I, I don't know if it's just the valve. In the pit. Like when we open it up, it leaks more. When we shut it, it's still leak. I don't know. We dried it up when we had the water shut off. Well, we, I, let's, I, I'd let's like find to get that yeah. fixed because people enjoy having that ability to have the water. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you familiar with the name? Elizabeth Yealy or Yelly owns grade 156 in Natural Barrier. Yes. Any so he's in there. Is that right? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure her son. That's what you talked about last time? Mm hmm. The 19, the 19 year old. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to have to. I know I got that info. We didn't report. You know what year that was? Last year? 17. Or 17? Okay, I'll look at the 17th transit permits. And uh, Neil um, Dawson. Dawson. Dawson's in 133. No, he's in 33, not 133. 33 on the north side. Mm -hmm. He's in 33. So we're going to figure out who's in 133. Unless I made a typo. Nobody. It, it, I just listed it one. It, see, he's in 33. I don't think anybody's in one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. <coughs> Paperwork. Okay, anything else for road and bridges? There's a, um, a resolution. The, the, the agreement between the Green County engineer, engineer and the Mike Potential Board Trustees for the uh, collective bid. Gilio has to be a resolution. Okay. Is there another? There is. It's 2019-11. Do you want me to read it? Please. Okay. <laughs> it says the county, Green County Engineer and the Miami Township Board of Trustees, here and after referred to as the engineer and the trustees respectively, agree to the following. Whereas the trustees desire to participate with the engineer in the competitive bid contract for the collective 422 chip seal for 2019 as bid by the county engineer, Whereas all work within the trustees' jurisdiction shall be inspected by and all questions decided which may arise as to quality and acceptability of materials furnished, work performed, the rate of progress, 
the interpretation of the specifications by the trustees and the acceptable fulfillment of the contract on the part of the contractor. And whereas the contractor will invoice the trustees directly for the actual quantities of work performed, all line items, extras, and or negotiated extra work in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 5575.05, and whereas the engineer shall withhold all retainage for the total bid contract of collective 422 chip seal for 2019 from the county's share of the work. The county engineer will ensure that the work has been performed in accordance with the trustee's instructions prior to releasing the retainage. Therefore, the acceptance of this agreement is indicated by the signatures below. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2019-11? I so move. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Is there a discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to sign that at the leisure. Okay. How do you check into the six point You want to check over there? Um, we can talk about that after meeting. Okay. So, fiscal office report. Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, we have a resolution. Another resolution. Well, um, you know, apparently when we when we did our um, our permit appropriations, we forgot to uh, appropriate any money for the fans and toys. I see. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> Uh, we, 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 we have machine equipment and furniture appropriations in the fire fund, but we didn't do anything for the road. But, well, maybe because we just didn't know how much we wanted to spend. Anywho, um, Resolution 2019-12, Amendment of Permit Appropriations. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of township, now therefore the trustees authorize an amendment to the following permanent appropriation. So, and again, gas tax fund, we put $30,000 in machinery, equipment, and furniture to cover the costs and the combination bucket mm -hmm. purchase. Mm -hmm. okay. Is it? That's 2019-12. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2019-12? Mm -hmm. Amendment of permanent appropriations. I'll make that motion. Crocky moves. Is there a second? I'll second it. Mr. Hollins, there seconds. Is there any further discussion? Regarding that resolution, hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Mr. Hollister? Yes. I don't think I have anything else to report at the moment. Do you happen to know right off the top of your head on uh, revenue status 2191 dollars uh, there's an amount of $67,000, $67,500. I'm just curious where we anticipate that from. Is that the uh, monies from the, um, from that township? No. Uh, that went, what, that what went into contract. I, I, you know, I don't know, I don't even have that report in front of me. Okay, here. Better be status. Um, uh, uh, I'm not sure right off the top of my head where the where that came from. Okay. Um, these these figures were issued by the county auditor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so uh, I don't know. I, I guess I, I, right off the top of my head, I'm like, it's not. It just it's funny. It's so close to the intergovernmental distribution and above yeah, it. I know. It's I saw. Yeah, I saw. Two hundred fifty dollars difference. Mm-hmm. Nope, I'm going to do it now, but I can look it up. Okay, thank you. Find out. Anything else? I was just going to ask. Anything else from you? <laughs> no, I've been good for a minute. Mm -hmm. Anything else with this officer on the board? Hearing none, we'll move to the zoning inspector's report, first meeting of each month. Hmm. You see he's on vacation? vacation? A chairman? When I called him last week, he was in Paris. Or yeah. he said Paris. Yeah. And I didn't dare call back. 
kind of want to inter interrupt that. <laughs> Visiting his grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I guess we can put his paycheck back in the safe. Uh, I will say that Richard called me since the last meeting about uh, asking whether I could attend and uh, attend the zoning commission meeting on the 16th of April uh, to convey uh, the trustees' uh, desires about PUD. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know what our desires are other than that we voted for uh, maintaining uh, the, the current provisions, uh, except we took out industry and commercial options. Uh, so my thought is I would uh, get draft or get sample uh, resolutions from other townships, uh, just do a little research about different options. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a good idea. But if you, do you guys have anything specific you want me to say? Um, me personally, without going through it and put some, you know, some thought into where I think we might change things, uh, I don't at the moment. Okay. I'll just uh, sort of do a best practices list and uh, they can chew on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, I guess we've got that zoning inspector's report taken care of. Uh, any new business this evening? Any old business this evening? I have one piece of old business. I attended the uh, organizational meeting for the um, Community Development Investment Corporation formation that's in the in process uh, in the village and obviously then in the township of which we would have a seat. And uh, I'm not sure I brought this up at the last meeting, but if I didn't, I'm going to do it. If I did, I'm going to do it again. There was a request from the from the board for each one of the uh, board members to make a contribution for the, towards the startup costs for the C CDIC. CDIC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, of a, an amount of five hundred dollars each. <clears throat> now, in addition to the five hundred dollars, the village of Yellow Springs is going to match that amount to put into the startup fund and an additional amount yet be determined because they have not yet met to today and will be meeting this evening and we'll be discussing what amount of uh, money they, they'd like the village in addition to the, to the matching and the number of ten thousand dollars has been uh, was bandied around as a possibility. So, this is money for um, good old lawyers to review the, you know, to review the um, bylaws, to review the five hundred one c three startup uh, paperwork, um, to potentially uh, get the uh, finances, financial arm set up, um, banking oversight on that. You know all of those sorts of because the CDIC potentially would be a, a a committee that would control relatively large amounts of money um, on you know on projects either uh, either acquiring them or disposing of them. So uh, it's probably going to be a little more than just going down to the U.S. Bank and getting a little checkbook and. Start putting zeros behind the <laughs> behind the amount. So you know all of those all of those things have got to be worked out, and it's going to you know, end up requiring a little bit of, uh, of fun. So I would 
like your opinion as to whether you want to support that uh, that contribution. So that would be five hundred dollars. Correct. I'm for it. Yeah, and yeah, I'm I'm all for it. Uh, I think that uh, it sounds like like the, the money is needed. Mm -hmm. And you will be somewhat involved with that because as the member of the Economic Sustainability Committee, mm -hmm. uh, they are going to be, you know, they're going to obviously have, work closely with this CDIC and to, uh, um, to formulate plans for, you know, what would be appropriate economic development, what would be appropriate mm -hmm. incentives, what would be appropriate siting uh, for, say, available property. Uh, I do know that um, uh, it was uh, mentioned by the school superintendent that the school is, I don't know how actively, but somewhat actively pursuing the possibility of selling um, real estate that they own uh, on, the, on the open market. Parcels around the school, parcels around the Mills Lawn uh, to raise money for facilities. So that would that would be a perfect you know venue to for a C D S E to uh, to operate in. So did they really say around Mills Lawn? Yes, because that was given by the college explicitly for school. No. Just to figure that out. for the check there is anyway. So uh, I would then make a motion to contribute the $500 to the CDIC and that would be in care of uh, the community foundation. They're the ones who are holding the 501c3, the nonprofit status for the CDIC until the 501c3 is uh, uh, approved by the federal government. So, there's a motion, uh, excuse me, is there a motion? I would like to make the motion to um, pay $500 uh, as our share of the initial costs. Okay. I just say CIC. And I would second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding that? Yeah, my question I was figuring that that was fifteen hundred. They were asking four hundred dollars per person. At least that's the way I heard it. Well, but we don't have fifteen members. No, no, no. Okay. Was it a hundred dollars per per member? Five hundred. Five hundred. Mm -hmm. It's not per trustee, it's per oh, okay. participant per uh, organization in the, I guess. Okay. In the CIC board. The, the, the CIC board will be made up of um, two elected officials from the Bill Gillis Springs, one elected official from Miami Township, one or two members of the school board, uh, the school superintendent, the president of Antioch College or his designee, designate, uh, a member from Community uh, Foundation, and three or four other additional at-large members um, from the from the uh, from the community. Um, it, you have to have you have to have a minimum of ten. And you have to have a minimum of six elected officials uh, out of the ten. You can have as many as you want, but you have to have a minimum of ten. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, the, the breakdown is eleven. So whether it will stay that way, or or whether the final membership that, that hasn't been determined yet. Mm -hmm. Still working on uh, getting a, a, a good set of bylaws to put together because you have to have. The very first thing you have to have, basically, to uh, apply for a 501c3 status is a set of bylaws. You have to have a name, you have to have a set of bylaws, and you have to have uh, designated boards of directors.
brightness. So, so that's what the first thing. That's what we'll work on. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, Any other? Do you want to call it? Oh, all? let's vote, please. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Mr. Hollister. Oh, yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Major. Yes. Okay. Move on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other old business this evening? Now, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'll make that motion. I'll second. Well, thank you all for coming. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thanks for staying. <laughs> she was mid.